What's up everyone, Tyler DeLuca back here with my top three takeaways from this past week in the WNBA. This week was a little bit weird because of the Commissioner Cup Final. Didn't have games on Monday, didn't have games on Wednesday. So really, we're looking at Thursday slate and looking at what do we take away from this? And I have a couple things that really stood out to me. First off, we got to talk about the Aces because they're looking like the Aces again. And we were talking about when the struggles were happening and everyone kept kind of pointing to we got to wait to see what, what this looks like with Chelsea Gray. That's, that was, you know, the, the general emphasis across the board. It's like, yeah, there's problems for sure. And maybe Chelsea Gray can solve them. Maybe she can't. But we got to wait and see. And we're seeing right now that immediately her impact on this team is massive. And changes everything for them. And it's, it's, it's very impressive to me just what having her on the court can do and especially on the offensive end obviously that's where she's that's that's her bread and butter that's where we know her to be at her best but just the ability to allow Jackie Young to allow Kelsey Plum to be off the ball more is so incredibly massive uh what we were able to see against this guy is Asia Wilson being Asia Wilson really the entirety of the game but especially in that first half and in the second half, you get a Jackie Young quarter in the third. You get a Kelsey Plum quarter in the fourth. And yes, Chelsea Gray's name is not popping up throughout that, like when it comes to having a dominant quarter. But the the fingerprints were on it the entire time. Um, and they're just clearly winning the minutes with Chelsea Gray on the court. And that is a very big difference compared to some of the, the, the way that we were seeing the Aces look like while she was out injured. Um it, I, I, I knew it would help having Chelsea Gray back on the court for obvious reasons. That's Chelsea Gray. I I wasn't sure if all the problems would be solved, especially more so on the defensive end. And I still think we, we, there's still some questions the answers uh, that need answering. But ultimately, the Aces look a whole lot more like the Aces with Chelsea Gray back on the court, as we expected. But the immediacy of just her impact of just being there is incredibly impressive. And obviously, we know what Chelsea Gray, we, we, we know what she's about. We know that she's probably the best point guard in the league. Like We we, we know this. Um, but just, it's cerebral. It's a, a, a genius at work when she's on the court. It is incredible, both as, as a, a viewer to watch, but also incredible for the Aces to have her back. And they immediately, not that they, even when they were kind of skidding I wasn't really worried in the grand scheme of like are they gonna make the playoffs or nothing like that but they immediately come back to like okay this is probably the best this, this is a very real chance of the best in the league like that is what Chelsea Gray has been able to do is immediately get them back up to that level which is just so incredibly impressive um and like I said not something that's necessarily like a, a surprise but it there there's a real it had to happen we had to see it it had to be proven and it is, it's, it's happening very quickly. Um, so, when it comes to the Aces, they look good. They they look very, very good. And I'm, just, I'm, I'm intrigued to see if there's more build to this. Like, if, if this is what the Aces are. Um, if there's more build to this. If more problems arise. If there's just, if this is just a solution. I'm, just, I'm very intrigued to see how the Aces continue to grow into this season. And uh, right now... They look very much like a team that is uh, obviously very capable of, of winning three in a row and officially being coined the dynasty. Like, that feels very, very real. So, very excited to see what they do. Another team that is looking like a championship contender is the Seattle Storm. And I've talked about them before. I've been very impressed with what they've been able to do uh, and, and the quickness they were able to do it this season uh, when it comes to jelly and putting new pieces together and... Um, you know, it's it's easier said than done to obviously you bring in the talent and they did that plenty in the off season. Um, but making sure it works and making sure it gels together, figuring out the best way to do that. And a big change that they made was putting Jordan Horston into the starting lineup. And I have loved what I've seen from Jordan Horston. You're not asking her to score, you're asking her to stop players on defense, and you're asking her to not be a ball stopper on offense. And that is exactly what she was able to do and, and what I expect her to continue to be able to do. Um, and the storm beating the fever and the way that they did it was like if you could figure out a way for 
uh, the Storm to win a game. Like, if they could, like, have a formula, I think it would be this game. You have Jordan Horston out there absolutely doing her thing on the defensive side of the ball. Jewel Lloyd went nuclear, which we obviously know she's capable of. It's been, there's been struggles at times throughout this season, but, like, you know what you're getting with Jewel Lloyd. And, and 34 points, it was ridiculous. She had one eye, most of the game. Like, it was, it was ridiculous what we were able to see uh, from Jewel. And also, as he just continuing to evolve as a player um, and as a scorer offensively. And it's just, you know, there was always going to be a constant on the defensive side of the ball for Ezzy and her being able to grow into having that on the offensive side of the ball as well. is just massive. And that's not to get into NECA and Skyler who didn't have their best games by any means. But like when you have Jewel Lloyd doing that, you don't necessarily need that. And, and that's what I'm very impressed with the storm is that you've, it would be very easy for them just to be like, okay, who's hot tonight? And you just keep going to them between their core four. Um, but they haven't really done that many times this year. And they've, they've been able to win scoring by committee within that core four. And I've really enjoyed that. But when you have nights like, like that, where Jewel Lloyd is just going nuclear, and that could be really any of the core four, it, it felt very natural. They weren't forcing it to her even when she was on fire. She didn't take a bunch of shots to get to 34 points. It was incredibly efficient. Like it was, it was it was perfect. Like the, just the the formula of winning that game was perfect. And I am being able to show like yes, because Jewel Lloyd is a, is a player that can go and win you games, obviously. So being able to show that this team, even with the star power surrounding her, is capable of allowing her to still go and be that player, which I never really worried about. But just being able to actively see it in action. Uh, it's very exciting. And then you obviously have seen what they've been able to do as a team and, and winning games as a team in that sense. And I, I just feels like everyone is pretty capable of filling most roles every night. And as if can continue to kind of flesh out what those roles are um, and, and where the best places for people to be are. Like I said, like especially like moving horse into the starting lineup, I think is the most glaring example of that. Um, it's been very, very fun to watch this storm team. And I'm, so incredibly high on them. Like I am still excited for what they can do and the potential of what they have. Um, but to see what they already have become in the present this fast is very, very impressive. And obviously like, you know, we're, we're getting into, we're, we're deep into the season at this point. We are like, we we are over, ha- we're over a quarter of the way. We're nearing up on halfway through the season. So like we are, Full, full, like we're, we're, we're getting to learn what these teams are. And, and I'm very excited with what we've learned about the Storm. Um, and to wrap this up, the two teams that we just talked about, they played some names you might have heard of, Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark. And this Rookie of the Year race is so exciting. It is so exciting. Uh, it, just in the past couple years in the W, um, we really haven't had a race for Rookie of the Year. Like, just plain and simple. Um, whether it just be players not getting enough minutes to do so, if there's just a clear front runner, like whatever it kind of form it takes, we haven't had a rookie of the year race. And to actually have a race is incredibly exciting. And, and so it just gives us an extra storyline to talk about. And especially when you think about the names that are involved with it, um, it makes it very exciting. And right now, I, I think it's very close and it could change by the day. But right now, I have been so incredibly impressed with Angel Reese. And not to say I haven't been impressed with Caitlin, but I've been so impressed, especially recently, with the the double double streak that Angel has been able to go on and just like the the sheer will to to go on rebound has been incredible. And just not something that you you actively see in players. Like that is not something that is a very like, this is a, a rare thing to just have like that that mind for rebounding. The way that she does, and the efficiency is getting better. Like it is, like the the defense has, has been there, and it just continues to be there. Like the being able to to rip through and drive, and it just there's you you could see the growth over time, um, while still maintaining the mentality that makes her what she is as a player, and being able to to see that growth while keeping the core of what she is as a as a player as a person. Like it has been so incredibly fun. To watch and right now I feel like she's probably overtaking uh, the rookie of the year race but like it's so close for me and that is so fun I I love that this is where we're at with with the rookie of the year race because this makes it fun like the, the records are similar 
the the stat like we're gonna have two rookie of the months at this point by the, by the end of June. I am I'm very excited. Like it, it is just it's a very fun race, and I say that saying like Caitlyn. There's times where I feel like she takes herself out of games or out of plays, um, whether that's on her or on her coaching or whatever kind of form that takes. I think I think we've seen it in, in varying ways throughout this season and and, and recently. Um, but like against the storm, she puts up 15, six, and seven, and that feels like a bad game because I mean, that's just where the the standard is for Caitlyn, um, and we're talking almost a triple double watch and. But only putting up nine shots is is not something I want to see from Caitlin. Put up put up those shots and, and and have the the mindset to do that. I think that's honestly what has pushed Angel ahead of for now at least is just the continuous mindset of I'm gonna go get mine. And I think there's so many factors that go into that. Um, but I just I want to see Caitlin return to some of that confidence that we see seen at Iowa. Now it, it can take a different form, but it, it feels like she's actively thinking when she plays. And not playing as free as we have known Caitlyn to play. And that is when Caitlyn is at her best. Is when it's her most fun to watch. And that's what we need to see. We need to see her get back to that. And if she does, she could absolutely take take back the race. And it's it's a race that is far, far from over. Um, and a race that is likely leading to them both being on the All-Star team together. Which feels insane. It's going to be seeing them suit up on the same team together at this point. Um, but I'm excited. And I'm, I'm ready to see and continue to monitor the situation when it comes to the Rookie of the Year race because it is neck and neck for me. But right now, if, if I had to put money on it right now, uh, like who I have in the league currently, I'm picking Angel Reese. But it is something that we will continue to monitor. But let me know who you think is in the Rookie of the Year race especially. And if you had any other takeaways from this week in the WNBA, let me know down below. And I'll see you next time.